Before we came on the air, the Commission on the Presidential Debates announcing the second debate between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden is now canceled. The decision coming after the president declined to do the debate virtually. The virtual debate was scheduled after President Trump tested positive for COVID-19 at the recommendation of health advisors. Biden has scheduled a town hall for what would have been the debate night once President Trump said he would not participate. And as of now, the third debate scheduled for October 22nd in Nashville is still on. A man the sheriff once called a career criminal was back in court today. Joseph Woolard is facing a long list of charges, including a murder charge stemming from a wrong way traffic wreck last spring. Paul Venema takes us to today's hearing, a hearing that included an unusual twist. Driving the wrong way and fleeing from police, 36-year-old Joseph Woolard crashed into another car on this highway entrance ramp. A passenger in that car, 20-year-old Asante Contreras, was killed. Woolard was a fugitive at the time, facing attempted capital murder charges in a March 2019 shootout. Judge Melissa Skinner, who was a prosecutor at that time, was forced to recuse herself from the case. I've had a lot to do with speaking with the family members on this case. And so I would absolutely have a conflict and it would not be in the interest of the defendant. Senior Judge Raymond Angelini presided over the hearing, Judge Skinner just an observer. Since she is running for re-election against Judge Michael Mary, the future of Woolard's case is unclear. In all likelihood... It will be sent on to a new court and then that new court will then set it for proceedings. That may be decided during the next hearing for Willard, set for October 28th. Paul Venema, Case at 12 News. San Antonio police say there have been two victims and potentially others following an arrest in a case of theft from the elderly. 29-year-old Priscilla Mitchell is accused of stealing from seniors in nursing facilities, allegedly targeting victims suffering from dementia or memory loss. She's facing two felony theft charges so far. One of them involves an 85-year-old woman at a facility over on Hebner Road. Police say in that case, her diamond-studded wedding ring was stolen. And the other was at the memory care community on Stone Oak, where Mitchell had been recently hired. The alleged victim, 80-year-old Darwin Dunlap. His daughter says, thanks to quick action by staff and police, the arrest was made and her father's wedding band was recovered at a local pawn shop. Even though I don't think he really remembers everything at all, there was some kind of knowing in his eyes when he put that ring back on that he, you know, I don't know, he, he was comforted that he had it back. So that meant everything. The facility where Dunlap lives sent this statement saying, quote, the canyons of Stone Oak is saddened by the fact that someone would take advantage of our most vulnerable population. We are thankful for the efforts of the San Antonio Police Department and their efforts to bring this person to justice, end quote. A man is in the hospital after being shot last night. San Antonio police originally believed that man was the victim, but witnesses say he was actually the suspect. The incident happened just before 11 p.m. on Yale Avenue, not far from Calabria and Fredericksburg roads. Police say a couple was being assaulted by a man. That's when another person intervened and shot that man who was taken to a hospital. He is expected to recover. Police are looking for two people involved in a shooting at a West Side home. This shooting happened on Bayou Drive near Marbach Road and Loop 410. Police say the victim was meeting with two men to offer them a construction job. However, a physical fight broke out. The victim told police that the man reached into his waistband. The victim tried to run away but was grazed by a bullet in the leg. The two men left before police arrived and the victim was treated on the scene. Hurricane Delta making its way on shore now, one of a record number of named storms to strike in 2020. It's been a busy year all the way around, including for those forecasting these storms. Part of forecasting tropical weather is flying right into it. The 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron of the U.S. Air Force, or Hurricane Hunters as they're known, they've been busy. In fact, they've been using Joint Base San Antonio Lackland for their missions into Hurricane Delta. Justin Horn has a preview of what the crew plans to do. Let's take a look. We're here at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland and the Hurricane Hunters have been using this as their temporary base to fly into Hurricane Delta. They're just about to launch their last mission into the storm. Uh, we wanted to make sure we got out of the way at home station in Biloxi, Mississippi, where we're based out of. 
uh, and two, to be able to continue the mission. Had we stayed back uh, in Biloxi, it's possible that the weather would not have permitted us to continue running 24-hour storm operations. This is actually the third time they've used Joint Base San Antonio Lackland this year. Tonight on the Night Beat, we'll show you how the Hurricane Hunters mission is vital to predicting these storms. The city of San Antonio announcing new upcoming dates for COVID-19 testing sites next week for people who don't have symptoms. The no cost testing sites will run from Tuesday, October 13th through the 16th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. These sites again for anyone needing a test, including those who are asymptomatic. No appointment needed. The two locations are the Cuellar Community Center off of San Fernando Street and the Ramirez Community Center off of Gillette Boulevard. Today, Broadway officials announcing that their shutdown will be extended again until May 30th of 2021. Here locally, the Classic Theater of San Antonio is one week into their production of Macbeth after being closed since March. The theater teamed up with the San Antonio Botanical Garden to host outside live productions. Staff says they began working on a comeback as far back as July, and they even planned to open, but then the summer spike came and halted them. Since then, they've been doing virtual rehearsals and planning for the return. Staff says safety is their number one priority. Because for me, the bottom line was always, we will not be doing this if it's not as safe as possible. So we wanted to make sure everybody was, that we could mitigate the risk as much as possible. All actors have masks built into their costumes and will be social distancing, except for the two leads who are married. The audience is required to wear masks and asked to bring their own seating. The San Antonio Housing Authority is trying to decrease the digital divide in our city. Today, they handed out more than 120 desktop computers. This event was part of Saha's Connect Home Essay program to promote Digital Inclusion Week. Organizers say technology means access to so much more than just the Internet. You know, it's life changing for the people who receive the computers because now they can act, have access to education, they have access to good health care, to job markets. And for us, it's life changing because we see the value in what we're providing through these partnerships so people can better themselves. The desktop computers were refurbished by Goodwill of San Antonio. Well, summer temperatures still have a hold on South Texas, despite us being more than two weeks into the fall season. Record heat is expected in San Antonio this weekend with temperatures creeping close to 100 degrees. But as Katrina Weber reports, some people cannot wait to say goodbye to summer. Take one look at some homes and you can practically feel the cool, crisp air of the Halloween season. It seems the weather, though, hasn't seen the memo that it's fall. It's stuck on summer. Almost 100 degrees. Wow, I think that's what life in Texas is. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen it like this before since I've been here in San Antonio. Michael Donerson was wondering why he's still working up a sweat in October, and he's not alone. There were a couple of days where I was like bundled up because it was cold, and now sweating. With even sweatier days on tap for this weekend, sweater weather seems like a far off dream, a cool, refreshing dream. I'm ready. I have all my pumpkin decorations out, and when it gets hot, it just looks weird. <laughs> yeah, I like the, the fall, you know, nice and cool times, you know. But like I said again, the heat don't bother me. While he may be a man for all seasons, others are ready for this one to end. A lot of people are hoping that nature will quickly get it together and get in sync with the calendar, at least by Halloween. Otherwise, they say they may have to get very creative. With all the hurricanes and whatnot, so hopefully it'll cool down. I am so ready. I'm raking up leaves and putting them around my pumpkins and, I'll, you know, cooking up my pumpkin latte and I'll pretend. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, this desk, this anchor desk is divided today. I am ready to say <laughs> see you, Summer. And I'm Devin, not. Mm -mm. Not so much. Stick around all you want, Summer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be Switzerland here. <laughs> I don't care either way, okay? I'm just going to be neutral there with this go. argument. I'll, I'll let you two hash it out. <laughs> <laughs> the aquifer is up actually today a little bit, three-tenths of a foot. Usually this time of year, we're not pumping as much out of it, so we can see some fluctuations upward, even despite lack of rainfall. Pollen count, though, ragweed, still ragweed season. It's moderate at 170. Mold and pigweed are on the low end. 94 in Hondo, 90 New Braunfels, 88 in Comfort, 
Right now in Pleasanton, we're 91. And Port SA checking in at 90 degrees, but Catula up to 97, Del Rio 95. We will all be feeling that kind of heat as we get into the weekend. First, we got to get through this evening, unseasonably warm, clearing sky, a bit humid, but no breeze out there, especially after sunset and a little bit of fog to start the day tomorrow. After the morning fog, nothing but sunshine. We're looking at a sunny Saturday well into the 90s. Sunday will be closer to 100 by the afternoon, and that would actually break a record for the day. The record high is 96 on Sunday, so we are forecasting a record high temperature for the second half of the weekend, and it wouldn't shock me if we even tied the record on Saturday. Here's a look at Category 2 Hurricane Delta making landfall basically right now over the Louisiana coastline with Max sustained winds of 100 miles per hour gusting up to 125. And of course, it's been throwing a lot of rainfall throughout Louisiana all day today. We're going to talk more about this, take a look at the wind speeds and how temperatures will moderate a bit next week coming right up. The family of a 13 year old girl are speaking out after she and her boyfriend are charged with her brother's murder. Tonight, the answers that family is hoping for. With Bear County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez. Tonight we're joined by Dr. Jun De Wu, who is the medical director for, M for public health here in San Antonio, our public health authority. And this is our COVID 19 update for the San Antonio community. This evening we're reporting 191 new cases of COVID 19, which brings our total to 59,514. Our new seven day moving average is now 156. Thankfully, we have no new deaths to report tonight, but you know this toll of the pandemic has been great on many of our neighbors and friends and loved ones, so please continue to keep them in your prayers. Tonight, there are 193 patients in the hospital with COVID. That's 27 new COVID-19 related admissions uh, to the hospital since last night, and we have 84 patients in the ICU and 37 patients on ventilators this evening. I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Rodriguez, and I'll uh, have a little bit more to talk talk about walk-up walk testing sites in just a moment. But first, Commissioner Rodriguez. Great. Thank you, Mayor. And, and I just wanted to take a minute, first of all, to uh, do something we don't we can't do enough of, and that's thank our frontline healthcare workers. Um, when we look at uh, how the hospitalizations have uh, come down over the past few months from over 1,200 back in July to now below 200. So just uh, kudos and, and a tip of the hat to those that are that are sacrificing, working long hours and helping folks recover from uh, from COVID-19. I do have a couple of quick updates um, and announcements. We do have a drive through flu shot event tomorrow. That's uh, Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That is at Nelson Wolf Stadium on the west side. Um, we do have over a thousand folks pre-registered already for that event, but we still have some slots available. Uh, so go to uh, universityhealthsystem.com slash flu, um, and you can still get your flu shot tomorrow for free without having to get out of your vehicle. So um, please come by and join us. Uh, Judge Wolf and I went by the AT&T Center this week. Elections start on Tuesday the 13th. Of course, AT&T is one of our uh, mega sites. They've got about 40 voting machines in that site. Uh, it looks great. And for those that wanna start preparing for early vote, uh, we did launch a new website this week called planyourvotesa.org. Allows you to go in, research what's on, gonna be on your ballot, um, candidates, issues, so we encourage you to go check that out. And then lastly, I know, uh, like you, Mayor, our office has gotten a lot of uh, questions about the uh, potential reopening of bars. I know that the county judge is waiting for some feedback from our, our public health professionals. Um, one thing we're working on currently, and we hope to have in, in the next few weeks, is um, an additional small business grant program that'll be specific, industry specific, for those who have been shut down, uh, like those in our service industry over the past few months. They were mandated to shut down by the governor. Uh, so we're hoping by uh, October 20th is our next commissioner's court meeting. We can have that program and get some relief to some of those small businesses. So um, hang, hang in there, bear with us, and uh, we're going to continue to support and have the back of our small businesses. 
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Rodriguez, and, and that is good news. And I also want to share with you that Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran in District 3, who leads our Economic and Workforce Development Committee, is also looking at the city's uh, small business grant program. We'll be discussing that in the committee, uh, specific relief, uh, again, to small businesses impact. We know in particular uh, our food and beverage industry has been very hard hit, and Councilmember uh, uh, Villagran and her colleagues on the committee will be examining that uh, here in the next a uh, couple of weeks. Um, also, I want to let you know about the walk-up testing sites from October 13th through the 16th. The City of San Antonio's no-cost testing sites will expand hours of testing of asymptomatic individuals from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. No appointments are required for testing and will be on a first-come, first-served basis. This testing expansion is a partnership between the City of San Antonio and Community Labs. You remember Graham Weston was on here, I think, a week or so ago, uh, and it's a, been a great partnership so far. The testing sites accepting individuals and with no symptoms are Cuellar Community Center and Ramirez uh, Community Center. COVID walk-up testing sites, again, uh, no appointment is required. They're operating from the 13th through the 16th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Cuellar Community Center is located at 5626 San Fernando, and Ramirez Community Center is located at 1011 Gillette Boulevard. Also want to make you uh, aware, again, of the assistance programs available through the city of San Antonio in collaboration with Bear County. Uh, we know many of you are hurting and we do have emergency housing assistance for those who need help paying rent or mortgage. Please visit the website. All right, the mayor there wrapping up today's daily briefing on COVID-19 here locally. He was reminding people something we mentioned earlier in the show. The city is now offering free testing to asymptomatic people, someone who is not showing any symptoms but thinks they may have been around someone who has COVID. So that free testing information you can find on our website as well as the city's. Uh, 191 new cases confirmed today. That brings our seven day moving average, that number really that's uh, the one to watch, to about 156 cases on average reported every 24 hours. Yeah, and there are 193 people in the hospital right now suffering from COVID-19, 84 of them in the ICU. 27 of those are new admissions since yesterday, and unfortunately, 37 of those patients are on ventilators. And I do want to mention uh, the county commissioner as well as the mayor were talking about some efforts underway between the city and the county to help out small businesses uh, with bars in mind. I know that that's something a lot of people are suffering with uh, here in our own community. For, so look for that uh, to come. Let's turn now to the weather. Adam, we've been looking at Delta all week. So is it finally on land at this point? Yeah, it did officially make landfall right around six o'clock near Creole, Louisiana. So that's where we have landfall in the center of that circuit of the eye, the center of the circulation there has come on shore and the northern edge of the eye is where most of the activity has been with this storm. And that's where it is right now with landfall, the eye wall moving on shore several hours ago and now official landfall. See all that rain spreading northward, some flash flooding, of course, an issue, and especially because uh, so many structures still in that part of Louisiana don't have complete roofs because of Laura just in late August. So they're still recovering. And then you add on top of it another hurricane. Luckily, not as strong. Laura was a cat four. This is a cat too, but still some wind gusts up to 100, 125 miles per hour near the center of that storm. And here's a closer look. Lake Charles right there. Of course, they got hit really hard in Lake Charles from Laura. And this is making landfall in a very similar location. Look at the latest wind gusts. Port Arthur, 74 miles per hour. And some of these locations now aren't reporting for various unknown reasons, but I did see wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour in Pecan Island earlier this evening. 92. That was our high temperature today and the record 94. Notice we weren't far from that record, just two degrees off this weekend record challenging and I do think some records will fall. We'll be 95 on Saturday. Sunday, upper 90s, right near 100 for the high temperature. And other than some morning fog tomorrow, a pretty sunny weekend. More sunshine, blue skies, and temperatures, as I mentioned, record challenging and I do think record breaking on Sunday. It wouldn't surprise me, it really wouldn't, if we hit triple digits on Sunday. Next week, we trim back the temperatures a little bit and gradually, but overall, get ready for a stretch of summer like days. Yeah, we need temperatures to fall, not the records. <laughs> exactly. Put in a good word. Thanks, Adam.
All right, Greg, so the Cowboys are getting ready. Oh, Larry. <laughs> hey, Larry. Hey, uh, Steve? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, I deserve oh, that. Oh, Devin, sorry. <laughs> All right, we know that uh, the Cowboys are getting ready to host the Giants on Sunday. Yeah, and that means former Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett will be on the other sideline as a member of the New York Giants. It's the best uh, – Worst defense in the NFL, I should say, against the worst offense in the NFL. Hey, we also got some BGC tonight. Lavernia football opening up district play coming up. District play gets underway in Lavernia tonight, where the Bears will host the Uvalde Coyotes. Lavernia is 4 and 2, while Uvalde is 1 and 5 after dropping 5 straight. Offensively, Lavernia is led by senior quarterback Gage Lowry in his nearly 1,500 yards passing the go with 20 touchdowns and 4 picks. Uvalde likes to throw the ball a lot, which will test the Bears' air defense. I know they pass the ball a lot. I think out of the games that we have from them, they pass the ball almost 80% of the time. So. I think our secondary and our outside linebacker course going to have to step up big in this, and I think we'll be all right. Pretty dangerous. They're going to they're going to be hungry to get a win. They're going to they're going to throw it around the yard a lot. That's that's what they're known for. But I, I think our defense is going to make a stop, and uh, I think our offense is going to hit on all cylinders, and uh, that's going to that's going to uh, catapult us to the win. Lavernia beat Pearsall 55 to six last Friday and has some momentum going into this one. Head coach Chris Tabor says that was a key contest heading into district play. Well, anytime you get a big win, you know, you, you kind of get on a roll, you get some momentum going. But I think the biggest thing is we had a couple guys out. We had a couple younger guys step up in some key roles for us and, and make some plays. And that's, that gives us a little bit more confidence going down the road, knowing that we have starters and backups that can get on the field and produce. And Uvalde head coach R.T. Gonzalez told the Uvalde Leader News it's the start of a new season with district play. They feel ready and are excited. And here's the road trip tonight. Uvalde at Lavernia, Carn City visiting Stockdale, and Natalia at Nixon Smiley. Part of the 16 games we have on the schedule tonight. Highlights on the night beat and biggamecoverage.com. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Former Dallas Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett will face Dallas for the first time when the Giants play at the Cowboys Sunday. Coach Clapper is now the Giants offensive coordinator. He says it's just another game and his focus is trying to help the win this G-Men get better. And this week could be the week to do it. The Cowboys defense is worse in the league and points allowed at 36 and a half per game. While Garrett and his Giants offense is worse in the league scoring 11.8 points per contest. Mike Knoll is the defensive coordinator now, so his whole scheme is different than what we played. Obviously, there are some familiar names, and you know they have really good pass rushers up front, and they got linebackers who can run, and guys on the back end who are good cover guys. So, uh, you know, familiar with a lot of the names, but the scheme is really very different. Giants offense hasn't scored a touchdown in back-to-back -back games. Last finding the end zone in Week Two, kick a Sunday, 3:25 in Arlington. Sophomore and punter Lucas Dean is quite the weapon for UTSA. Saturday at UAB, Dean punted six times for a 45-yard average with a long of 55. Dean had four punts down inside the 20 and has 13 on the year down inside the 20. Dean was named the Ray Guy Punter of the Week and was recently added to the watch list for the Ray Guy to work for the nation's top punter. He knows the value of pinning the other team. Beautiful kick. Gives the defense like 90 to 100 yards to work with, which is... Uh, Coach Perry actually shows a drive start chart, and I think it's like one in 30 chances of them to score if the ball's like down inside the 10. So definitely, like the whole special teams unit sees the impact that flipping the field can have. Dean also said UTSA's punt team is called the Navy Seals because Coach Trader calls them the most trusted guys on the team. That is quite the honor to have your special teams unit named that. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Thanks, Thank Larry. You got it. We'll, we'll be right back. With our COVID-19 numbers continuing to head in an encouraging direction and the positivity rate now finally below that 5% goal, a lot of students might be headed back to class, back to campuses the first time in months. Yeah. So part of our KSAT Q&A today, Inga Cotton, founder and executive director of San Antonio Charter Moms. Thanks for being with us. I uh, want to talk to you first about your biggest recommendations for kids and families who are making that decision to finally head back to the classroom. What are the biggest ways they can prepare? 
Yeah, so it's decision time because a lot of uh, schools, depending on their calendar, maybe first quarter is ending or there's a new grading period starting. And that's an opportunity when families can choose to have their kids go back on campus. Um, but it's important to do your research. Um, you know, kids need to know that when they go back on campus, it's not going to be the same as it was back in early March. There might be fewer kids in their classroom. There might be shields on their desks. They might have to wear masks. There's going to be more hand washing stations. So we encourage every family to research what the new procedures are on campus and then spend some time talking to your kids ahead of time um, just so that they know what to expect and they're not disappointed. You know, maybe they can't play the same way at recess as they used to. And we know that all parents aren't ready to send their kids back into the classroom. So distance learning is continuing in a lot of situations. Talk about how important it is to find that balance between independence and supervision. Yeah, you know, it depends a lot on the kids' ages. So like my friends who have very young children, sometimes they really have to sit side by side with them and make sure that they're able to use that technology and get stuff turned in and stay on task. But what I encourage families is like, as your kids get older and even surprisingly young kids can, can learn these technology skills. They can learn to check, you know, what's their to-do list today, make sure they get stuff turned in. But it's always good to have that, that safety net of, you know, going in at the end of the day, make sure stuff gets turned in, you know, maybe every week go in and check the grades and just make sure that, that things are on track and have those open lines of communication with the teachers because we need to give lots of love and care to the teachers. They're working very hard, but they're, you know, they're, they care deeply about the students and they want to help us and they want to answer our questions. And you know, a lot of this happening while parents are balancing their own jobs at home, working from home on top of this. So whatever decision families have made about their child's education, not an easy one, right, during this entire pandemic. So what would you uh, tell parents to watch for, no matter how their child is learning? In terms of red flags, how could a parent tell, okay, the current situation is not working for my child? Yeah, this, this is something that comes up a lot in our, um, so we have a discussion group on Facebook. It's open to people in the sanitary community, moms, dads, gr guardians, grandparents. Um, and, you know, sometimes people will message me or one of the admins and say, I have this anonymous question, I'm concerned. And and then we'll we'll share it for them and, and get feedback. And so it might be something more subtle, it might not be just that they're not turning stuff in or they're, the grades are low. It might be something more like they just seem to want to lie down all the time. Um, they seem to be losing interest in the things that they used to like. Um, they talk about how much they miss their friends. You know, so those might be signs that maybe the isolation is getting to be a problem. And we've shared resources on our website about things like mindfulness and mental health and how to take breaks and, you know, just the, the ways to cope as best you can with, you know, for those adults who are working remotely and for kids who are doing remote education, you know, but it's important to, you know, look at the big picture and say, are we making the right trade off? Or does my kid need to be with a teacher? Do they need to be with kids their own age that they can play with and socialize with? And Ingo, all of this can be stressful just to try to take it all in. How important it is, is it for you to find time for wellness, doing things like outdoor activities, stepping away from the computer screen, not being in front of it all day? Just talk about that. Yeah, that's that's really important. I think there's there's this myth of productivity that, you know, just the more minutes you spend at the computer, then you're winning. But that's not true. It's really better to take breaks and then come back to the computer more productive. Right? It's better for your health. So. Um, you know, having like a set of stretches that you do, or maybe like a few simple yoga poses um, that kind of resets your body, um, taking a moment of mindfulness where you're, you're thinking about how you feel, but not judging how you feel, right? Maybe if you feel a little sluggish, it's because these are really tough circumstances that we're all living in. Um, you know, and then think of, ask yourself how you feel, ask your kids how they feel, and then think, how, how would I rather feel in this moment that our feelings are not it's not something external that's being pushed on us. It's something that we have control over inside, but it's a skill that takes, that takes practice. So just, you know, understand that productivity means having balance, right? So you work when you're at your best and then you take a break and, and refresh yourself. And going outside is fantastic. My family, we've loved the, the Greenway Trail system here in San Antonio and the Texas State Park system. And those have really been our escape and our, our refuge. And a lot of people have needed that over these last seven months. Before we go, mm -hmm. uh, tell people how they can be part of those Facebook groups or the other online groups. How can they find uh, that resource? Yeah, so San Antonio Turnarounds is a nonprofit organization and uh, it's free to join the Facebook group. So it's the San Antonio Turnarounds discussion group on Facebook. And uh, we have a website with free resources, how to research schools. So we want families to find schools that are the right fit, whether it's a charter school, private school, magnet school, 
traditional public school, homeschooling, pandemic pod, you name it. And so, you know, it just, it, the focus is on education and it's meant to be a welcoming and supportive group where you can, you can say, hey, this is what I'm concerned about. And it's parents helping parents to problem solve because that's what we all need right now is a little extra help. And again, not just for parents of students who are in charter schools, for any parent who's looking right. for to just to bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah, all yeah, right. come, come join us, we welcome you. All right, Inga Cotton joining us from San Antonio Charter Moms, giving us some really good advice as the semesters continue. Thank you very much, Inga. Thank you so much, good evening. We'll be right back. If you didn't get enough sleep before the pandemic, chances are you're still lacking enough Z's to stay healthy. One third of American workers were not getting enough in 2018, and researchers are expecting those numbers to sharply increase in 2020. Ursula Perry explains just exactly why it's so important and what you can do to get some more shut eye. Sleep. It's seven hours to give your body a chance to reset. As a nation, the number of people who are getting the prescribed amount, though, has dropped from 75% in 2008 down to 64% in 2018. Health science researcher Jagdish Kupchandani first analyzed the sleep habits of 150,000 Americans through 2018 and then updated those results earlier this year. You'll find that there are some groups who sleep lesser than five, four, people with multiple jobs in the lowest socioeconomic strata, people in the South, police officers, doctors, nurses. Regarding the pandemic's first responders, only 50% of police officers and 55% of healthcare workers reported getting enough sleep. That deprivation adds up. And in the long run, you continue to gain weight. You have a risk of heart disease, cancers, and stroke. Uh, because sleep is like a medicine. So while your schedule may have turned upside down during COVID, you need to try to keep your sleep routine normal. Also, avoid heavy and sugary foods before bedtime and try to cut back on all that screen time. And there's one other finding regarding women and sleep. The percentage of women who say that they do not sleep enough went from 31% in 2010 up to 36% in 2018. And that number is expected to go significantly up considering all of the stresses regarding coronavirus. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, taking a live look with live cam. Beautiful sunset out there at 89 degrees. In the beginning of October, but it feels more like July. Yeah, that's going to feel cool <laughs> compared to this weekend. Oh, you know it. We've got a record challenging heat on the way this weekend, but first we have to get through this evening. Good evening for high school football. It's a little above average. 89 right now by 8 p.m. 84. Clear later on this evening as well. 80 degrees at 10 p.m. And we'll wake up to tomorrow to temperatures in the upper 60s with a little bit of fog. We'll talk about Delta and that summer like heat for the weekend coming right up. All right, normally I look forward to a weekend forecast because it's the weekend, right? <laughs> this one, I, I may have to protest. Scorching is what Near we can expect. Near triple digits, mm. Kasky? Yeah, it's fall, but it's not going to feel like it this weekend. Here's the way I'm twisting. I'm putting this, okay, and trying to sugarcoat it for you. Pool water has cooled off quite a bit. Neighborhood pools, backyard pools. It's a little too cool for some folks. Well, that will feel refreshing this weekend. Uh that's some consolation. Look at there your you go. Optimism. <laughs> that pool is half full. <laughs> not, done. not half empty. <laughs> All right. Here's a look at the activity that's moving into Louisiana. Unfortunately, we have another hurricane making landfall along the Louisiana coastline. This is Hurricane Delta, category two upon landfall. Landfall was at about 6 p.m. over Creole. Louisiana max winds of 100 some gusts up to 125 with this hurricane and of course a lot of rainfall. It's been raining all day and it continues to do so. However, on the south side of the eye, there really isn't as much precipitation and it seems that the highest winds are on the north side as well around the eye wall there. Look at the latest gust Port Arthur 81 miles per hour and even 81 in Jennings. OK, these are the latest wind gusts and this is an area that is still recovering from Hurricane Laura that struck in late August. You look at the wind radii, red indicates the hurricane forced sustained winds. So the sustained winds in the 70s and even higher, 74 miles per hour and higher. And it's confined to about the Lake Charles, basically a few parishes here. 
But as you go through time, the system weakens as it interacts with land and that wind radii shrinks a bit. And then we're just looking at more tropical storm force winds, which could still be in the 50 to 70 mile per hour range later tonight and into the early morning hours tomorrow. All right, let's talk about rainfall with this and an additional five plus inches easily throughout northern and central Louisiana, stretching all the way up the Mississippi River, almost to Memphis there. You can see the swath of predicted rainfall is basically the path that this system is going to be taking with a sharp cutoff once you get into Texas. For us, we're not going to get any of that moisture. So I mentioned Laura. This area is still recovering from Laura. Roofs still have tarps on them. We don't have steady or permanent roofs in many locations around there in Louisiana because of Laura. Well, that was a cat four. And look at the parallel tracks that they took two different times in the same season about a month apart and look at the landfall. They basically intersect right over the same spot. Their paths intersect for the landfall. Lake Charles got hit really hard by Laura, still recovering from that. Then you add all this water on top of it and there's sure to be a lot of water damage. And even I did see a storm surge report of seven feet. So that's seven feet above ground level. That was along the coastline. 89 degrees right now. Nice sunset out there. 91 in Midland. Alpine, beautiful Alpine. 89 degrees. Del Rio's at 95. And we're, we're feeling the heat. Catula 97, Laredo 94. I think all of us will have readings like that this weekend. Summer like. The cold pool water will feel good. It'll still shock you a bit, but it'll feel good. 95 on Saturday, 98 on Sunday. Actually, I'm starting to lean toward 99 100 for the high temperature on Sunday. The more uh, information that I get in to, to Myra's dismay, <laughs> it wouldn't shock me if we hit triple digits on Sunday. Some morning fog tomorrow, otherwise sunny all weekend long and a southerly breeze at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. We are anticipating a record on Sunday. That's our forecast. The next week we trim back temperatures a little bit and gradually Upper 80s toward the end of next week, still running above average for this time of year. So by next Friday, we'll see some relief. Yeah, some, yeah. Oh, look, 85. <laughs> wow. I'll take it. I like this weather pattern just for Myra's reaction. <laughs> I want more of this. You just enjoy my reaction in general. In case True. you missed it, coming up next. Good morning. It is Friday, October 9th. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for two people involved in a shooting on the west side. It happened around 1030 last night. Police say two men went to another man's house after a construction shift, and then the three of them got into an argument on the front lawn. One pulled out a gun, shot the victim in the leg. The two suspects drove off. The man who was shot expected to recover and did not go to the hospital. San Antonio police also investigating another shooting just north of downtown. They say a man was shot in the leg after he tried to hit another man's girlfriend. Police say the woman's boyfriend pulled out a gun and shot the man once in the leg. He was taken to University Hospital and is expected to recover. A woman arrested early this morning after authorities say she stabbed her boyfriend during an argument. Deputies say the couple was fighting and at some point the woman stabbed the man in the chest. He is expected to be okay. No word on what charges the woman will face. We're here at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland and the hurricane hunters have been using this as their temporary base to fly into Hurricane Delta. They're just about to launch their last mission into the storm. This is actually the third time they've used Joint Base San Antonio Lackland this year. And a reminder, there is a flu shot drive this weekend. Our KSAT community partners are working with Bear County Precinct 2 Commissioner Justin Rodriguez to hold the drive tomorrow, October 10th. It's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Nelson Wolf Stadium. Registration is required. You can find out more information on how to do that right now on ksatcommunity.com. So today we started off at 71, which is well above the average low of 62. Then we topped out at 92 in the afternoon. We were only two degrees shy of a record high today. Tomorrow will be close within a degree, maybe even tying the record. It wouldn't surprise me in the mid 90s. Some patchy fog in the morning, then nothing but sunshine. More specifically tomorrow afternoon, Del Rio, Catula, Laredo, we're thinking triple digits. Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, Uvalde, very close to triple digits. By Sunday, I think we'll see 
even more triple digit readings across South Texas, possibly even in San Antonio. But right now we're forecasting 98, which would be a record high for the day by two degrees. And we trim back just a little bit as we get into next week. But we're not looking at any strong fall cold fronts anytime soon. Got to find that chilly pool water. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> and All thanks right. for watching the news at six. We'll see you back here for the night beat at 10.